Lia trutera sotomas. This is Santia from Sirius. Greetings to you. Hi, Santia. Thank you for joining us today. I have come to speak about something of a higher level. I see that Bashar was here, and he spoke very plainly to you. I would like to encourage your people to heighten their psychological gifts, their mental gifts and their mental energies at this time. This is a perfect opportunity with the fourth dimensional energy and the changes in earth energies to become closer familiar with your own brain. There are many portions of the brain that are not open to humans because of one reason or another. It could be dangerous for some. But there are those of you that we need you to open a greater amount of your gifts to protect others from some of the things that are coming, to protect yourself and family. Hesitate to use this time for meditation to open up some of these areas of the brain for greater energy use, for greater gifts, for channeling, by locating astral travel. Some of you are already working on these things, but no one has come through and actually encouraged it. From a very high dimension in your comparison, see that there are some of you that need to take charge when things are at their worst. And that is not to frighten you. We do not come to frighten. Because what will happen will happen whether you want it to or not. Change has to come whether you want it to or not. No matter what you change in your personal lives, the world has a mind that is connected in some ways. All of earth beings are connected in their thought processes, in their spirit and in their understanding of society and what that is. Society guides some of the events that happens on your world, in fact, a great deal of them, over 90%. Now, Governments influence the rest of that percentages, except for a very few individuals that may have some say in the universal causality of your planet. Now, with that being said, I would like you to look within yourself to see what talents above and beyond the third dimension that you possess because this can help further the first contact. It can help further the understanding of others toward the perceptions of things that are not within their perception at this time. Oh yes, I heard Bashar say about how you should be to help those that have great belief systems to change and to alter themselves, to become part of the, the new thought process, the greater idea that all should be involved in the universe 
and all should be involved in the galactic works, and this is true. But you must do your part as well. I hope I'm not speaking above what you can understand. But many of you have gifts and talents, but you are lazy and do not meditate or do not want to push forward. Or you do, but you have no drive for it. Let the energies that are coming and that are here help you to become that greater person because I see that many of you are to be the leaders. Of course, this place called Human Colony is but a small place right now, but it has a great amount of leadership, a great amount of thought energy, a great amount of talents that are not being used. Do not fight among your selves. What does that do? Your opinion is equal to someone else's. So why must it be better? It is not. If you make your opinion better, you make yourself less. Why? Because if you push to be better and you are not what you are, then you are less than the least among you. I know that is hard for you to perceive, but when they say the first shall be last, if you push to the head of the line, you may be the first to get punched because you do not know what they are giving out. If they are giving out punches, you will be first. People believe that if they are the first to be someone or something, that that makes it greater for them. It is true in humility, but not in pride. When you come to a great place out of humility, you don't even realize how great you are. When you come to a great place in pride, you feel greater than other people, and you are not. These words I give to you because I see that among you there are bickerings and backstabbings and negativities. And why you do it? You want yourself to feel better? Or you feel attacked? Why do you feel attacked? Is because there's something in you that needs to be released, not in them. Of course, if you say they are negative, they may have negativities in them that need released also. But it should not affect you unless you have something that is negative and is stirred up by it as well. For those out there that say, I like my negativity. My negativity helps me to ground. My negativity helps me to be who I am. Well, you know what? Your negativity will never help you be great. It will help you stay exactly where you are. You do not understand that your negativity is not really for you, but against you. Now, I know you cannot get rid of all of negativity. Some remains to keep you in balance to keep you grounded a little bit, to keep the yin and the yang in balance. But there's those of you that have an overabundance of it, and it needs to go. The fighting needs to stop. You are the leaders. If there's fighting among 
you deed. Who is to take charge if you can't even agree that you're equal? Agree that one of you is wrong. Being right seems to be the thing to be on your planet. You must be right, you must be the one in charge, and you must be the one in control. Fine. Do it out of love and humility, not out of pride and wanting to have the most. These things, these greeds, are why your Earth is where it's at at this point. And they will bring your planet to a halt at some point. And then you will have to decide how to move forward. If you decide to use your greater gifts and bring in the positivity that is you, does the planet have to stop and take realization of what's happening and move forward? I think that is what I am trying to say right now, is that it does not have to stop if you make the right moves, if you purge yourself of your pride. Pride is the one thing that keeps you, some of you, moving forward. I'm so good. I'm better than you. I have more gifts. I'm going to be a leader. Wonderful. I'm glad that you feel that there is something about you that is very positive and that is useful. But when you put it out there, in a way that people see it as overbearing and they don't want to be around you, then that's not good leadership. You want to draw people to you. You do not want to push them away. You want to draw people to you with your love, your concern, your understanding, your purity of heart in the thoughts that you actually care about these people and not just yourself. It's a harsh thing, but you are coming into a time where you need to be loving, generous, and beautiful leaders, enlightened, Embodying the truth, bringing those under your arms and training them up to be great leaders as well. This is a group of great people. You have many talents, but start seeking out the others. I know you said, I've been seeking, but I cannot find anything. I've been seeking, but everything is eluded. I, I, I don't know where to search. That is when you have to realize you need to go in and find God in here first. The God inside. The God who presented himself to you at your birth. He is there within you. Find him first so you can connect to him on the outside. But if you cannot find him in here, you will not find anything in here. You will not find much in yourself without the God flame because he is all that you are. 
So come and talk to him first. Before you can enlighten anyone else. Or find the God that is wanting to speak to you from the out. Is there any questions? Yes. I have a question. They'll come closer. What you just spoke about just really resonates with me because I feel as nothing. I feel like there's nothing in my heart. There is, though. I don't. Find the God within, the flame that's always been there, the flame that made you love in the first place. The flame that made you want to do something for mankind in the first place. Here today, what desire was that that brought you here? There is something there, but you must find it. It's been hidden by all the things from society, all the things that people say to you, and all the things that you say to yourself that make you unworthy of moving forward. But you are worthy to move forward because God is your basis. And because he is your basis, you are worthy. Do not think otherwise. And do not feel constricted. You see, you stop yourself from feeling because sometimes it hurts. Mm -hmm. But hurting is part of all feelings. And you know what? It builds character. And it, you can lean back on the pain and say, I don't want to feel this again. Let's move forward. Do not dwell in it, but make it a trampoline into something else. Jump forward from your pain, from your failure, from your confusions, some of you have made it a great basis for something that you never want to experience again. But underneath that is the God flame for all things, the understanding, the truth, and the knowledge that came in first. But yes, find the flame again. Find it. It's why you're here. I feel like people don't want to be around me. Am I pushing them away because of that? You feel like people don't want to be around you because you don't want to be around you sometimes. And that is what you must change. You are a wonderful, beautiful, loving person. Why wouldn't people want to be around you? There are people here that love who you are, but it is you that are having trouble loving yourself. Love yourself. You are worth being loved. And when you see that God's love for you that has always been there is the love that is you, then you will not see that people do not want to be around you, but just the opposite. You will want to be around them, and they will flock to you as well. Thank you. Yes. Is there any other questions? Yes, thank you. We do have a few more questions. Um, we have a question next from Jose, uh, jo Josue, um, Jose, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, uh, I'm, but I'm not sure if he can talk. Josue. How do you spell Josue. it? Sorry. There you go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Um, so... So yes, I I wanted to ask. Um, so I live in New York City. I and I've been traveling to the West. Uh, I was just uh, in California last week. Um, and every time I go to the West, it's like it's easier for me to get grounded. It's easier for me to 
feel things okay. and just connect to inside. Uh, but uh, I always wonder, if, are there places here in the city where I can feel that? Let again? me explain it's like, what is happening. First of all, you're from a very dense energy. New York City has a very dense energy, but a very powerful energy as well. Very many powerful people are there, but not all of them are positive. And there are not a lot of very strong vortexes in that area. But when you go to California, they're all along the coast are vortexes holding it up to the waters. They yeah. have been put there by many people, and the vortexes are very positive. And so when you go there, it is easier to ground because also you're closer to the center of the earth in the sense that the, the shell of the earth is thinner there. And so you can ground a little easier. But it's also a state of mind. You can ground easily right. anywhere in the world if you so desire, if you so put your intention on it. But I can understand that physically and mentally, it is easier to ground there. So, is there another question that goes with that? Uh, yes. I uh, actually would like to know more specifically if I can... Uh, well, I know I have to you know, keep up with my practice and, yes, go out and try to ground myself. But is there a way or, or a place where I can try to connect with entities here in some way? And also, I'm, just to finalize that question, it's a little bit like three in one. I, don't, I, I know. I'm sorry about that. Uh, what was the hand that I saw in my room a year ago? So this was my spiritual awakening. Yes. I saw something that I can describe as a x-ray hand that was coming towards me. Yeah. And just, I just got up and I knew that I needed to do research on the worst yoga and meditation. I put them together and ended up at a retreat center the following month. Yeah. <laughs> what the hand did was show you that you are, your mind was awakening. But not only your mind, but your heart and the spirit of God that is you was awakening. The hand was to show you that you are not alone in this. That you assistance always. That there is places to go and beings to speak to and that you are never alone in this journey. Take heart in knowing that they care who you are and they want you to move forward. This hand was like the hand from outside, the God hand, if you will, showing you that the inner light was starting to shine. Wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Sorry, I uh, got your name. <laughs> Sorry. I've I'm been running errands. Sorry. I am Cynthia, and your name is what? Josue. I love that name. Tia. Thank you. My mama found it on the Bible. She didn't know what to name me. And... And the the are always strong. They always have meanings that stretch beyond the earth place into the spirit realm. Wonderful. Thank you very much. You. Uh, anything? Is, if I may add something to that, is there anything specific, more specific about the hand and who or what was? If it was a it was a spirit hand. I believe it probably was an angel in my understanding of how they present themselves in these times. It looked like an x-ray vision hand, didn't it? Yeah. It was them showing you that they are made of similar materials.
materials to you when they come into your realm, but that they are from other realms. So it was the hand of an angel, as I thought. Is that what you thought it was? Right. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Satya. Thank you very much. Santira. Santia. I'm sorry. Santia. Santia. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much love. Wonderful. Thank you. What? Okay. Um, next, we have a question from Jonah. Um, first, she's asking, will there be changes for the hybrid people who do not have a conscious knowing of that which are living now on our planet during the hybridization program? Yes, there will. I think her name is pronounced Jonah, but you might pronounce it Jonah. Let me tell you, yes, there will be changes. Every person that has hybridization within them, which is many, many of your humans in this realm, will feel changes in themselves and feel closer to Mother Earth in many senses because this is the, a planetary thing. Your hybridizations have come from many different species from many different times and your past lives will represent these different integrations of these different species okay interesting thank you um, she also has another question she wanted to know how can we develop our gifts and talents only by meditation? I feel we have different gifts, but as me, I know I feel, uh, but I don't know what it, what my gifts are and how to really develop them. This is all I can say to you. Seek and you will find, because you will find your gifts at the appropriate time. But what I am seeing now on this planet is the time is now for many of you. The time is now for many beginnings and many endings, as it was said earlier. And this is a time for human colony and the people therein, for many be beginnings. And Jonah, you are wonderful and gifted, and you have a great communication skills you have great enlightenment and can speak to others very easily and lovingly I think that somewhere in that communication within your heart you will find light that is shining the direction that you should go Okay, thank you. Okay, um, next we have a question from um, Sheer, if you would like to go. Hello. <clears throat> How are you? Sheer, continue. Well, people here already ask about hybridization, about how to develop their abilities and the new beginnings exactly the three things that i was wondering about myself <laughs> yes so if someone i would try to make it short if someone has a lot of hybridization is there something you should do being if someone want to see being aware is there something you should do and see do you see anything that I should know about in my future, for saying. First of all, let me ask you some questions. Have you noticed any changes in yourself lately? Um, maybe, maybe minor changes, like a certain area in my brain that is tickling. You know, what about weight loss? Condition. Have you noticed any weight loss? Maybe. Yes, 
There are things happening to you right now. It is a beginning for you, Sheer. You have many beginnings, and they come in layers. Beginning after beginning after beginning. But this beginning will be one that will take you a great distance. And that is all I can tell you at this time. But there will be more than just this beginning. But some will take you small distances, and others will take you great distances. And this new journey, you see small changes in your body, in your thought processes, but there will be a great change coming soon. How soon, if you can, if you can say? How soon is soon, my friend? Hmm. Very yeah, soon. Okay. Thank you very, very much. And have we ever met? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I know we're coming close to the hour end here, but uh, I know we also got started late. Do you have time for some more questions yet? A few more. But okay. Things are running late, and people must go to different places, and so must I. So only okay. a couple more questions, please. Okay, sure. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, we have a question from Jasmina from the YouTube chat. She was asking, uh, I'm moving to another country in Europe. How will Europe deal with these changes? Uh, she's speaking of the upcoming changes everyone keeps talking about, um, the, the beings and yeah. So forth, she says. I also, I can hear, or can I please hear any messages from my guides at this pivotal time? Let's do the first question first. Europe is very strong in unity. England has dropped out. They have even become a tighter union in some ways. You will understand this in the future when things will change. As far as your guides are concerned, your guides are speaking to you daily. Otherwise, you would not be leaving your country and going to another. You are feeling comfortable in this change in some respects. And I think that you will find that there will be a great deal of satisfaction with this change. Also, physically, you are going through some changes now, but release the pain to the sky sometimes and let yourself relax. You are going through many past life pains that you should not be able to or you should not have to deal with at this time. They should be alleviated by someone at some point. I will help you with that. Speak to your guides. They are listening. Okay, thank you. All right, um, next then we have a question from David. Continue. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, greetings. Uh, thank you. I uh, was curious about, I've been told that um, I have connections to Sirius and was interested in learning more about that and also the connections of uh, my healing ab abilities. I've told that I'm a powerful healer and I was curious about if you know when that had begun, did it have anything to do with the time uh, with Jesus and Mary or anything like that? Good question in the respects that it is a spiritual beginning. Whenever you follow the spirit, things of the spirit increase. Therefore, yes, in some respects, there have been lifetimes when your spirit has been high, your healing abilities have increased. In this lifetime, you're experiencing many different elements of many different past lifetimes. However, 
someone has come and tried to block all of this and tried to make it all fail, but it will not. If you keep moving in the direction that you are moving now, the abilities will continue to grow and will be known by many. And you will be able to touch many and heal many. The thought processes that you have now must be healed in the sense that fear should not be part of your life. Fear should be weeded out and confidence in your love and your wanting to give to humanity should be first thought and not fear for yourself because you are protected. You see, many of us find that we had fear about existence and fear about things happening to us or the people around us. But when you give that over to realizing that you were born to give to the world, that you were born to heal many people, how can you live in fear when that holds you back from the greatest and most wonderful gifts that you can give to mankind? Yes, this is good to hear. Thank you. This is awesome. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, we have a question next from Pavel. Yes. Hello. Hello, Pavel. Hi. It's really nice to hear uh, from you. I really uh, loved what you said. Thank you. Um, my question is, um, can you give me um, some advice from you? On, the, on what? On your spirituality? Uh, just whatever comes to you. <laughs> so if so you see something, you can help me with. I can see that you are a, a kind, loving and giving person. That in t that people outside of you are sometimes what hinder you. The things they say to you confuse you a little bit sometimes. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. You are one that can rise up and become a leader also. But you do not see that self and you do not see that side of yourself as a leader yet. Not fully. But... You are coming to a place where your journey will lead you into a greater understanding of what positive gifts you can give the world. Pavel, you are a great energy of love and kindness. You are a good person. And many people see this, but sometimes you listen too much to society. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But be aware, the God within you is strong. And he will help you to move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. One more you. question and that will be all that I... I will do. Okay, sure. Well, we did have a question from Sazagin. Um, one second, we have to go. Yes. Um, okay, oh. well, I'll push through the echo here. Sazagin? Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry? There is oh, a question uh, in the room as well that I will answer. Oh, great. Okay. First, uh, Sezgin was just wanting to ask you if you guys have met before or if he has channeled you before. Let me connect to you. Yes, I have been close by you many times. And you have felt this energy with you, have you not? Yes. You have felt me and my energy before. Okay. No question. Wonderful. And well, thank you for question? answering that. You're welcome. 
in the room and come to this microphone. They tell me if you ask it, you will not be able to be heard. Hello. Hello. Very nice to meet you. It is nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Um, I, Speak to the mic. I have uh, a question about uh, a galactic sister. Yes. Named uh, Errol. Yes. Who came to this planet uh, many decades ago. Yes. And was uh, interviewed and given an opportunity to uh, enlighten us. She has since passed on. Oh, really? Yes. But go ahead. Well, I, I, there was so much information. Um, I guess I want to know the truth. Yes. Did she speak the truth? Was it, yes. Was there, was, was there any shades of gray in there? Or was it black and white? I understand your question, and I will answer it. Errol was a great being. She spoke very honestly. She spoke from her heart, and she was one that was captured at one time. She is now in spirit. She no longer exists in bodily form. She had caught something from your planet that was incurable by their planet, and therefore has not survived it. She did speak the truth. The percentage of truth, and, and according to her perception, was about 97%. So she was very, very honest and gave a very true and factual presentation. Good to know. May I ask you one other question in regards to what she said? Yes. She mentioned that this was a prison planet and that all of the spirits that have um, come into human form here a repeat because they can't escape this planet to go to other planets or where they originally came from um, and that before we enter this planet again um, our uh, memories are erased and so <clears throat> my question is is there is this true is there a way to get to re be released from this planet and those of us that are trying very uh very much so to evolve on this planet yes when we are uh, leave this bodily form and we go to wherever we do go which we have been told to go to the light mm. um do we at least when we come back have the same knowing do we contain the same knowing that we have right now yes will we bring that back with us or do we have to start all over again let me answer that. That's many, many questions. But let me tell you this. Her perception of this planet was that it is like a prison planet. However, the prison is in a mental way. She was being very honest. But free will and oversoul do exist. And people from this planet can be trapped on this planet like no other planet, in the sense that there are more ghosts here and more of those kinds of spirits. However, that does not mean that every being is a ghost when they leave. There are many have left. In fact, a great deal of the population goes to the Oversoul. Very, in percentage wise, there is only 5% perhaps that are trapped. And there is a great reason for this, and it's because of the belief systems that were developed here on this planet conceive of. They cannot understand or be represented in any way, shape, or form by any of these beliefs. And so they stay here and are trapped in the prism of their belief system because it cannot relate to those of any other belief systems. But yet now we are coming into a time on your planet where they, they, they can be released because their belief system will be. And also the other parts of your question is that, yes, 
when you anyone comes back into the human a human body form if you choose to come back to a human body form you have that choice you cannot come back if you don't want to you don't have to come back but if you come back all your memories are erased but behind every chakra is, is all your past lives no matter where they were from you still have them and that you always will in the chakra system because why you may need to call on some of this information to deal with this life and so therefore yes you will have all your information intact always 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 now it may not be enlightened immediately when you are born if your chakras were to be enlightened immediately Immediately, you would be mad as a child. You would have all kinds of information that you did not need. But as you realize, they brighten softly. They brighten softly as you become who you are in karma, in this world, in your knowledge, in who you are to be in some respects and who you are going to want to be in other respects. So therefore, there are many different perceptions of who you are as a child before you become anything more than a child. And you know that by your contract, you will have these certain events, perhaps, unless you change your karma or direction. Notice the hand. With your hand, your human hands have all kinds of directions on them for, for this life. This is your life map, and it does not have one line on it, but it has many, and many, many lines. And you can choose in this life to go many directions, but there's one that's d deeper and darker than all the rest. And this is the one that you follow if you are following your exact contract. Thank you. So therefore, and you understand out that, but um, yes, but for only some is this the pr prison planet, for only some. That is true, for some it is, but not for the multitudes, because they can make their belief system fit here somewhere. These are the ones that have been taken out quickly, that their belief system cannot handle some of the things that they have lived, perceived, and understood. And they cannot connect with the spirit because they are afraid of what they were. Not what they are, but what they were. Thank you. And it was, did I answer all your questions? I think there was more in there, but I forget them all. I have one related to that. Come, come, come forward. When we help, my name is Erica. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. When we help people pass to the other side, yes. is it okay to tell them to go to the white light, or is that what wipes yes. their memories? No, this is, this is perfectly fine. What you are doing is reassuring them that the white light is the way out of prison. It is the way out of their belief dilemma. And when you are helping someone out of that particular prison, which is trapped between worlds, you, they will see that at the end of the light, there are others that are there. And that's sometimes what frightens them. Let them know that these are relatives these are people that are welcoming them in, not that are going to punish them, not that are going to, to make their lives worse. But this light, and it always will seem like, do not believe those that will tell you that the light at the end of the tunnel is false. That is wrong. They are trying to keep people in prison. They are trying to keep the prison going. And that is why they're doing that. They do not want people to pass into the light for some reason. But the light 
if you see the light at the end of the tunnel, why would it not be the perfect, beautiful light if that is your belief and intent? It differently, of course, it will be different. But if your intention, you will not be fooled by God. You will not be fooled by God. God will not show you a false light if there is not one. Okay. That's very wonderful. Thank you. Because when I listened to all of her, what she had to say, it shook my foundation. I understand. And going to the light, I had a near death experience when I was a child and I went to the light very innocently and very quickly yes so it just made me crazy. it is it innocent and it's, it's a beautiful and it's innocent and why would you not move to the light it is what you believe and your belief system is not inaccurate if you you see God is there at the end of the tunnel if that's what you believe he's there and but there are many things that mankind and has put on belief systems that are not true and therefore that is why many people doubt and are trapped so therefore when god comes very soon to speak to his people how clearly he will speak to his people and let them know exactly how he feels and what is true so much. You are welcome. And stay. stay. With that, I must go. Yes. Thank you for joining us. We had a lot of burning questions to know who you are, though. If you would be able to tell us a little bit more about yourself, we would love to know. I am Cynthia. I am the ambassador to Earth from Sirius the one who will speak to mankind when necessary. And that is what I've done. Okay, very interesting. Uh, are we able to find out um, which Sirius you're from, uh, which race you are from? Well, I'm from a race that I call Sirius, but we are from the planet seven, seven light years to the left of the dog star. Okay, interesting. Uh, people are asking if you're male or female or um, I am female. Uh, about your race. I am female. Okay. In gender. But that makes no difference. Of course not. <laughs> All right, very interesting. Well, wow, thank you for joining us today. Um, we definitely appreciate it. Do you have an R in your name? Is it Sentia or Sentira? Sentia. I, on my planet, I am sometimes called Sentira because the R on the planet shows my priestess also, my priestess side. It is only on my planet that they would add the R. Oh. Very interesting. Well, it's a beautiful name. Thank you for coming today. I, I personally really enjoyed your message you first came in with. We all loved hearing from you, so thank you. Thank you. Much love to you. Namaste.